Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, and I'm here to discuss the latest issue of our journal that's posting today online. And our state-of-the-art article is by Scott Grundy and deals with prediabetes, that is, those patients who have an elevated blood sugar beyond the normal, but not quite at the level to diagnose diabetes. And Dr. Grundy points out that, in fact, uh, prediabetes usually goes along with insulin resistance and the metabolic syndrome. Uh, it's associated with macrovascular disease, but not necessarily with the complications of microvascular disease. In fact, at the moment, the evidence that treatment uh, specifically directed to, uh, to prediabetes uh, uh, is not a, a available that it would be effective. And so treatment ought to be directed just to the metabolic syndromes globally. Uh, in terms of coronary artery disease, there's a really interesting article that deals with the role of vasospasm, and we all see patients with uh, typical angina but normal coronary arteriography. And in this particular study, they administered acetylcholine intracoronary to test for vasospasm and found vasospasm in 50% of those patients. Interestingly enough, about half of the patients had, had a large epicardial vessel uh, vasospasm, but in 50% it was microvascular uh, vasospasm with evidence of ischemia. So it points out that uh, when we have a patient with typical angina and normal coronaries, we shouldn't necessarily say that they have non-cardiac chest pain. They may well have vasospastic angina, and as pointed out in an editorial by Dr. Marzilli, in fact, the vasospasm may be a, a very important factor even in those who have uh, atherosclerosis of the epicardial vessels. In terms of cardiac imaging, we have an interesting article that compares uh, the ability of CT angiography to detect obstructive coronary disease as compared to radionuclide stress testing or SPECT. And as has been shown before, there's not a close correlation between the results of CT angiography and SPECT. They're looking at two different things. One's anatomy and, and the other one's physiology and ischemia. However, there's recently been a, a major focus on whether or not our screening tests for coronary angiography accurately identify those patients who will have obstructive disease suitable for revascularization. And in this regard, this study clearly shows that CT angiography is more effective at correlating with invasive angiography as is uh, radionuclide stress testing. Perhaps no surprise that anatomy correlates better with anatomy than does physiology. Nevertheless, uh, if our goal is to identify obstructive disease, uh, then this uh, particular study poses a hypothesis that our better screening test might turn out to be in the future CT angiography. There's other interesting articles in, in this issue that deal with heart failure with preserved uh, ejection fraction and, and uh, the role of left atrial function. So it's, it's really a, a neat issue, very clinically relevant. For Inside Jack, I'm Tony DeMaria.